Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you what we're going to do with that retriever. The retriever block that I taught you how to make in the last episode. And I promised something with water mills, so let's get right on that. In order to do this, we are going to need a timer. And for a timer, you need to recook your smooth stone into stone wafers. Okay, we are going to need... Uh, let's see. We're going to need some... some stone anodes and I believe we're going to need three of these and in addition to that that's uh, by the way stone wire okay and we're going to need at least one of these for a stone cathode and then I believe we'll also need one more And that will use smooth stone. So we do need a little more smooth stone. Just one more. Okay, and that'll be one of these. One of these, a redstone torch. And this, a stone pointer. I believe the pointer goes in the center. The cathode goes here. And the stone wire let's see I believe this is right and I believe this goes this way there we go so this is the recipe for a timer okay it's stone wafers in the upper corners with a stone wire in the center stone wire on the sides in the center and a stone pointer a stone anode stone cathode stone anode anode I'm not really sure how to say that so that's a timer Okay, and we're also going to need a deployer. And a deployer is made, let's see. I believe this is right. This is a deployer, okay, and I'll show you what that does as well. And I believe that may be it. So let's go ahead and head down into the basement. I have refurbished a little bit looks a little bit nicer now I've put down some of this gray brick and gray brick you just make that by combining four smooth stone together and that makes gray brick it's called stone bricks okay so our electricity wire comes down here and I plugged a battery box into that and we're gonna put our water mills right here so let me show you how to make those the water mills are made with generators in the center and you put wooden planks around those and sticks in the corners okay so let's see a few more sticks here there we go and each generator makes two water mills so in addition to that we are going to need some water so let's go ahead and grab that Looks like we have a little bit right over here. Okay, we're going to need two. And there's going to be a tube right here. So I'm going to place that right now. And our deployer is going to go right here. There. Oh my goodness, that is not right. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's see, deployer right there okay and it's gonna face this way and our water is gonna go here and we need one more water you can actually make an infinite amount of water and the way it works is if there are two tiles well let me rephrase if there's one tile where two water sources are adjacent to that tile that tile will become another water source. So there's a water source there. If I were to put one here, the center one would become a source, as you can see. So now we have our deployer, okay, which is going to have buckets in it. And we're going to place our timer, let's see, right there. But for now, I'm going to leave it off. Okay, we're going to 
place our water mills over this area and our retriever where is my retriever right here that is going to go there and do I have that right no that's backwards retriever is going to go there okay and we're going to put some pipes like so Okay, and our water mills are going to go like this. Oh, oh goodness, I need a wrench now. So let's go grab the wrench and take that one down. Now, Water mills, normally I don't like them, but with this contraption we're building, they'll be worth it. The water mills normally give almost no energy at all, which is why I normally don't like them. However, if you have a bucket of water and place it in to the water mill, it will generate two energy units per tick, which is um, significant compared to the 0, 0.0 something energy units per tick it normally creates. Now. In addition, we're going to want our hand axe. We'll get to that later um, because we don't want this this tube going in to that that way. And we're also going to need that filter. Okay, and the filter will go right there. And I suspect we're going to need our screwdriver for now. I'm just going to let water out a little bit so that I can place this. I did build another filter already. I showed you guys how to make that in the last episode. So the filter is going to go right behind the deployer like so, so that it's facing the deployer. And then we'll cut off that water. Okay, and we will place a tube here. Okay. And I believe we're actually already almost done. The filter is we are going to need buckets. We need at least one bucket for each of the water mills that we made. And I placed, I believe, eight of them. And in addition to that, you need one for the retriever, which we've already... Oh, actually, we haven't. So we need one for the retriever and one for the filter. Okay, the filter is going to get a full one and the retriever is going to get an empty one. So you fill them just by right clicking and we'll do that. Okay, and you're going to want one in the deployer and then you just place empty buckets in your water mills like so. And the reason you do it this way instead of just placing them directly into the deployer is because if you have this system, this contraption can support more than the number of buckets the deployer can hold. So if you wanted to build more, you that's why you do it. If you want more, then you just put them in those instead of in this, and it'll filter through. So now we need to get a redstone signal you can hold shift to click on things without accessing their interface so that's what I'll do and I'll place down my timer here and oh, is this is this not working right let's take a look the retriever is supposed to only pull empty buckets So far, I'm only seeing empty buckets. Looks like it's working. So, as you can see, um, this is why we didn't want this here. So let's go grab our handsaw, take care of the tube issue. And that also gives me opportunity to show you another use of the handsaw.
The handsaw can be used with pretty much any solid block. You put the solid block under the handsaw and it makes you partial blocks. They're called micro blocks. In our case, we want covers. Okay, so that's panels and then this is covers. And then I can use the covers. You can see the GUI is already on my screen. Uh, so I'm going to place the cover right let's see if I can get it right there and that cuts that off so now this will not happen anymore and we can put that right here and in addition this whole system can run much faster I find that the most effective is 0 .550 seconds and now we have a permanent source of energy that is significantly better than wasting your coal. Okay, and this whole contraption here, the battery box is right next to the retriever, which is why the retriever has power. It's getting power from outside and the timer powers all three of these at the same time and keeps these full. So now what we can do is we can come up here we can move our entire machine room down there instead. Okay, so but for now though the main thing I want to move and I'll get these out and I'm going to lose some energy here, but that's okay. And I'm going to lose energy on this too. But again, that's alright, because now we have a more permanent source. What I'd like to do is place down my bat box down there from Industrial Craft, so that you can see that energy is in fact flowing into the system. And let's see what's the best way to do this. I think that we need some tin wire actually. So let's go make that. Tin wire is very similar to copper wire. The difference being tin wire can only transfer up to I think eight maybe energy units per tick before it evaporates and Let's see, let's grab all six here. And in addition, tin wire, it's energy loss instead of on the fifth block losing one energy unit, on the 40th block it loses one energy unit. So you can use it to transfer energy a long distance. However, you can only use it if the energy being transferred per tick is eight or lower. So we can use it to power a bat box with these because these only transfer two energy units per tick. And it doesn't matter how much total is going across the wire as long as each source is only is, is under its maximum. So let's grab our bat box and place that down. I should probably move it further away, but I'm going to upgrade this back box later on anyway. So, as you can see, it's already filling up. No fuel required. That's filling up rather quickly, too. So now we have a much better source of power. And these are now making noise because they're actually transferring their power somewhere. But this contraption can maintain this system indefinitely with a full drain on power and no problems. And in addition to that, the more buckets you put in here, the more easily it can handle the system. But this should be a perfectly fine number of buckets. I don't think that you guys will run into any problems. You should be all right. So that is the contraption I promised you that we would make. I've been told that this tin wire can zap you if you're touching it, but as you can see, I'm standing right on it. I don't have any problems. So I don't know if it's true or not, but it does not seem to be the case to me. 
Now this little dot on our bat box, as I explained earlier, that is where the output goes. And I was thinking I would place my machines along the other side of this room, which is going to have more gray brick along the wall here. So let's see, that gives me a walkway of two between my power generation and my machines. That's not too bad. And I can always, if I really want to, I can run power through the floor over here to these machines. I can't use tin cable under there because the tin cable, this outputs 32 energy in its per tick. So I can get tin, tin cable from my water mills into my bat box, but I can't get it from my bat box out to my machines. So I will have to use copper cable for that. But that's no big deal. It'll go, let's say, one, and then one more down so that I can cover it. That's two, three, four, and then we'll place a bat box. And then one, two, and then up two, and then another bat box. And that's three bat boxes total to be able to have our machines where we want them. That's not too bad. And our bat box is already full. So I think we're in a lot better shape than we were before, and it is getting very near time for me to go mining again. I need some diamonds because I would like to upgrade this bat box into the next best energy storage unit, and I'd love to show you guys that. So let's see, what else can I show you? I did all that preparation last episode. It feels like this episode is really short. It was like a, almost a 40 minute episode. 40 minutes. It's my longest episode ever. And I got no comments on that episode. People must not have liked it. I did get a whole bunch of eggs from chickens. So let me show you something cool about eggs. Oh, before I do that though, let me mention that the contraption there, I'm going to be building a tutorial to better explain um, where how placement works. like just a separate tutorial so that if you guys just are only interested in building this I will build it from scratch in the tutorial and this whole contraption works with nuclear reactors as well getting water into and out and empty buckets out of a nuclear reactor and you can build as far as I can tell a nuclear reactor that can output 490 energy units per tick uh, pretty high efficiency and no chambers necessary on the reactor at all so that's really cool so let me now show you eggs eggs are dropped by chickens once per chicken every five minutes or so and they're extremely useful they make chickens one of the easiest animals in the game to farm and what you can do is you take those eggs and you just throw them by right clicking Okay, and occasionally, as you can see right there, you'll get a baby chicken from the egg. So, we have two chickens now. Let's see. So, we got a stack of 16. I believe there was one above it as well, and it uh, auto-filled the stack. So, around 20 eggs. I got two chickens, so roughly one per 10 not too horrible because once those chickens grow up they'll lay more eggs for me and I can just do that over and over again and have a constant supply of raw chicken with which to cook up and eat so that I do not starve because we all know I don't like starving it's not very fun so I did wrench my geothermal generator so what I think I'll do since geothermal generators don't have an input. Now I can't place it here because the tin cable here can't handle that level of input, but I can place it right here. Okay, and that will help power my bat box when I need it. So I'll go ahead and put my lava cells in and it eats them. Okay, because it can hold up to a certain number of lava cells worth of energy and that will only drain 
when it's needed and hopefully it will prioritize the water mills but I don't really know how that works to be honest with you so if anyone knows please comment anyway uh, the original that I made of this system to test it out to make sure that it would be oh actually before I even explain that let me show you something else you can use the covers like that to to make it look like see like nothing is there and actually I could even do better than that there so now it just looks like that's a cobblestone brick okay so for the most part it looks like oh that's only because it was highlighted so if you're not highlighting it looks just like it's just a cobblestone brick and I can do that with stone brick as well and I plan to so that that looks more natural and you can do that over here if you want to but to be honest I don't really care that much about that spot however I may move these over once they're used up so that I can fit more I did make six more and I do believe that this system can keep six water mills six more water mills and that would make 14 total water mills I do believe that this system can keep up with that so for now I've got eight and that's 16 energy units per tick which is better than that generator that I had which was only 10 energy units per tick and with it going into a bat box the bat box outputting at 32 I should be able to keep my induction furnace powered with no problem since it takes 16 energy units per tick while cooking fortunately since it's only while cooking it does give that energy more of a chance to build up while it's not in use which is quite nice so I think that that will be the end of today's episode and I will be making a tutorial to go along with this so look forward to that in the very very near future probably tonight um, if you like this episode please click like and subscribe and thanks for watching